This video is brought to you by Robinhood, the free and easy to use investment and trading brokerage. Robinhood allows you to trade and buy stocks, ETFs, bonds, and cryptocurrencies completely free. Also, if you download using the link in the description below, you'll get one free stock valued up to $200 just for signing up. No, you don't have to deposit a dime and you can become instantly a part owner in companies like Microsoft, Walmart, McDonald's, or Disney just by getting lucky. So download Robinhood today and start to taking advantage of this historic 2020 stock market crash no that's not my full portfolio you guys aren't ready for that just yet what's up youtube capital g here got some eye popping duels for you guys to check out it's ritual week on the channel at least it's ritual day we'll just go with that ritual revolution is now in effect and one of these decks is actually a vendred deck try to guess which one by the opening hands Oh man, it doesn't look like either one is a Vendred deck, but you guys know the little Despot package that people are running in decks right now. It's uh, it's very potent because it gets you to Halifibrax, and then that gets you to Aurora Dawn, the uh, Mecha Phantom Beast Link monster, and then you can do a lot of crazy things. You guys know how I feel about Halifibrax. I'm not going to belabor that point. I hate that card so much, but let's go ahead and roll if the duel if. And I believe that uh, Angeli is going to be Ashed, and unfortunately, sometimes that, that that's how it be with Madoches, man you go for your first play you get ashed and you just don't have any more plays uh this is why i, I honestly think you should well no I, I can't say you should always go second with Madoche because post eternity code they can really go first because they now have negation they have double summons and all that stuff but you open with a couple too many go second cards so you probably would have been better going second the top card suit cake so no i think this guy was just boned right regardless anyways uh let's see what's going to happen here so Despot 01 can summon a Despot monster from the deck. That gets you to your Despot 2. These are now a tuner and non-tuner on field. I'm sure Konami never intended Despots to be able to go into Halifibrax, but guess what? They can go into Halifibrax, and you go into Aurordon. It gets you out, what, three tokens, and then your Despot summons itself from the graveyard. Uh, I don't think that's a hard one. It's not a hard one to return to vet, because I actually seen a I have a duel where somebody does it two times. They summon, like, Mecha Phantom Beast. Yeah, you know what? There it is. It's not a hard one to return because he summoned two of them they ended up summoning uh mecha panda beast draco sack and then they summoned it from the graveyard again which is kind of crazy anyways herald of the arc light uh two of them wow <laughs> that's crazy two herald of the arc lights that's dope that'll get you a couple of searches and now you got your vendred package going oh my goodness i i totally missed that in the, the first time you watching it anyways uh Reven Veg, uh slayer is going to be summoned and then you're going to keep going into some other plays and at first i was kind of wondering where this was going i don't know if you guys missed that but he did actually send Jen, presider of rituals into the graveyard yes there's actually people still play Jen monsters i mean the best Jen releaser of rituals i mean even that got banned in the ocg but yeah people still play some gens that is the one that when a monster destroys um another monster when a ritual monster destroys a monster by battle it allows you to draw a card now i think he's going to get black garden and i was looking at this and i was like obviously this is a cheese play revolving around a whole lot of uh, a whole lot of combo enablers. But I was like, where exactly is this going? I mean, when Black Dragon hits the field, your opponent's going to be forced to get a whole bunch of monsters. And now we're going to go for some other plays with Archfiend's Manifestation. I think this is actually going to be to summon Beatrice, if I remember correctly. So I couldn't really figure out where exactly this play was going. But believe me, it's going to be pretty derp. He's actually going to send this random Scorpion perform Hell thing to the graveyard. And still not quite understanding until he summons the Slayer. And this is where it's going to actually be absolutely stupid what happens here. So he he did ultimately use the Jen Presida of Rituals, and his Revenge Slayer actually gets multiple attacks. Now, every time he never, every time he attacks a monster, he has the ability to draw a card, and then he can also draw an additional card and discard. Watch what's going to happen here. You won't actually believe it. He's gonna go for. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, this is the one. 
this is the one that says once per turn target a face up card you control it can attack all special summon monsters i was just thinking i was like how does he get the additional attacks it's with the random scorpion uh performer pal monster so now he can actually attack every single one of these rose tokens that obviously you force on your opponent's side of the field so you do have five draws what do you guys think the win condition is going to be it's so stupid i i honestly couldn't believe it the first time i watched it inner battle phase he attacks he's going to draw a card he attacks he's going to continue drawing cards and would you look at that <laughs> the win condition this is actually 3000 iq the win condition isn't vendreds at all it's exodia what is even going on big brain plays don't get me wrong i really <laughs> don't like only having duels that uh, start with halifibrax and that type of stupid cheese but when you give me a revendred or a vendred deck that then converts itself into an exodia otk that's the type of cheese i like to see because i mean i've never personally seen someone draw exodia during the battle phase but there's a first time for everything I mean, i've been playing this game for 20 years and you know still uh, still stuff surprises me every day anyways let's go to the next duel I told you guys, uh, Ritual Revolution is in effect. So uh, we're going to double up on the Revendreds or Vendreds. It's Revendred Slayer. I always say that. Anyways, Orcus going first. Orcus, uh, they basically like can't really combo without Mech Knight, Orcus Gear Suit. So they have to rely on the Scrap Engine. Uh, rest in peace to um, Orcus Harpoor. That card's banned. Anyways, he is going to get an Appaloosa for two. Appaloosa for two is generally kind of cra uh, crap, but when you get like Den Gear Suit, it becomes less crap honestly because then it is kind of protected from battle at least it's protected from battle from a couple of attacks now he is going to make that um din gear suit also has a dark monster to get probably the destruction yeah oh no wait that's troll he doesn't go for i mean it's not gonna matter because this guy is playing vendreds they don't really use the extra deck anyways he's playing extravagance but yeah he gets orcus nightmare like what are you doing you're supposed to go for the uh the buster the destruction sword uh buster blader uh dude the little the little buster blader the level one guy yes you, you guys know the one i'm talking about the one that doesn't allow your opponent to special summon from the extra deck anyways he didn't open with any of the super powerful cards and by that i I mean like pre-preparation of rights or extravagance or anything like that because this guy doesn't really have any negations outside of the Appaloosas. he does have protection against the destruction of Appaloosa, and um i mean that's kind of it his opponent is going to be able to get over it quite easily he's going to protect it once protects it twice but he does have multiple attacks because it was summoned using the uh the revan dread evolution so this guy gets multiple attacks actually i guess that's a recurring theme in these uh, vendred duels is that this guy revendred slayer getting multiple attacks and from here it's kind of like free low because he can actually that Dengarisu is completely susceptible to destruction now and he's going to actually summon that big battle lord he calls spells his opponent's going to use called by the grave but i mean honestly what does that really matter i believe he is going to end the turn with one of my favorite ritual monsters if you watch this channel long enough you'll know exactly what guy is about to come out uh, I'm sure he's going to search it. I think he's actually, yeah, there it is. Joey in the power suit, or let's say Joey in the red eye suit. He's going to get the Lord of Red on field. Uh, Lord of Red, anytime a card is activated, you just get to blow up a card on your opponent's side. I freaking love Lord of Red, man. I mean, I just, I really, really am a fan of this card. Also, the fact that it's level eight. I know it's it's, it's like red eyes, and you, you would think that it's level six, but believe me, it being level eight is, is significantly better. In ritual decks, you don't want odd level ritual monsters. Konami should just like never make other than like the Necroz of Colossalus and his his older form Trishula. Odd level ritual monsters are just weird. They're they're really difficult to work with. At this point, he does have double disruption. Lord of Red can pop a card, Slayer can pop a card, and this duel is basically just free low. Anyway, so these are what the decks look like on paper. You guys can see this is the Exodia build, and just give me a second to switch some of this stuff around. Uh, this is not obviously a competitive build of Exodia. It was more shown off because of the dankness. You know that there are a lot of things that had to go right for that play to come to fruition, and when you play a Despot that, that you know, kind of relies on the Halifibrax into a Roardon play, there are a lot of choke points. MBT talked about that a while ago. Uh, there are so many opportunities whether it be despot three or halifibrax or even auroradon but uh, mainly despot three and and halifibrax if your opponent ashes or impermanence is either one of these cards you are basically boned and you can see a lot of the rest of the deck are just kind of like one ofs and other kind of hodgepodge cards or hodgepodge 
car cards thrown together that are like either extenders or cards to get you to like some of your ritual pieces etc etc but many opportunities for this deck to uh fold like superman on laundry day i do like the fact that he's even running some assault mode cards in here look at this we got assault mode activate we got assault beast we got Psy reflector the only thing we're missing is uh let's see if we can pull it up here stardust assault what no 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 i want stardust uh here we go here we go stardust assault mode <laughs> let's throw that in there and then we're also going to put uh we, we need to be able to summon our stardust assault mode so we're gonna take out that because we didn't use that in the duel boom there we go now we can actually summon stardust assault mode anyways if you guys want the more competitive build of uh vendreds i would recommend a more standardized build like this a build that can play battle lord it allows you to play around hand traps because you can just summon this call monster effect if your opponent has something like nibiru sorry he's just not going to be able to resolve at that point um i think that like you have so many plus ones and i've said this in the uh build the builds or the videos in the past actually incantations a lot of times are plus twos so many plus ones with pre-prep and extravagance if you wanted to maybe free up a little bit of space maybe you wanted to run kaijus or impermanences you're saying i always want to blind seconds i would probably recommend maybe extra foolish burial and drag down those could be the cards you look at maybe dropping uh keep in mind extra foolish burial it's not just for herald of the arc light you can send Nethys to the graveyard for spot removal but it does come at the cost of uh you know half your life points which sometimes it matters sometimes that doesn't matter drag down is another card that can kind of let you play around uh hand traps but you are ultimately giving your opponent a plus so you kind of need to like make sure that you can either lock your opponent out or win anyways if you guys are interested in either one of these decks of course it will be in the description below thank you guys for watching as always subscribe if you have not already and turn on that notification bell for daily videos